Well, welcome to Word Time. This is Coach Shelby with Coach for Christ, and here we are, end of week. Some people call Sunday the first day of the week, but it kind of feels like it's the end of the week uh, to me, praise God, bringing it all home. And uh, leaders must know and leaders must sow. Uh, to know and sow and bring your talents, according to Matthew 25, um, is kind of what we talked about this week. And I want to give you some nuggets. And, and why, why give you these things? To brag? No, absolutely the opposite. By doing some of these things and talking about uh, the Word of God, uh, you actually, in a way, put a target on your back. And uh, we actually did that uh, this past week, false accusations and uh, people looking for every little flaw that they can find, which are easy to find in uh, the most anointed believers you know, uh, because we're still flesh and our dependency is still upon the Lord. I mean, the cancer patient, uh, just because they're, you know, they're uh, going to treatment, uh, does not mean that their body is perfect. There's still some imperfections there, which is why they go to treatment. Uh, the Christian that uh, uh, is going to Jesus has still got some imperfections, which is why he continues to go to Jesus. And this is by God's design after the fall, of course. So uh, I just want you to know that don't let those things deter you. Uh, we are responsible for a multitude of men and a young men that will grow up to be men of God, but some of them are on delay. Some of them, there's a little lag time. Sometimes it's going to take five, 10, 15, 20 years. That word of God's going to get down inside their soul. It's going to marinate. It's going to bring forth some 30, some 60, some a hundred fold. And I'm telling you, like I tell mine, you're going to see me on aisle five at Walmart. Why aisle, aisle five? I was told by some of the kids, that's the meat aisle. Hey, we need the meat, not just the milk. Amen. Jesus said, I have food that you know not of. I eat the meat. I got teeth. I've cut teeth. It's time to dig in. So anyway, we talk about that and we realize that this is not a microwave effect, but it's a, a persistent and consistent, an action of grit to keep speaking the word of God and doing what's right. Even if there's some knuckleheads that you're working with, just understand that you're dealing with other people's offspring. You're not going to change it overnight. Amen. And you couldn't change it anyway. It's the spirit of God that draws men unto himself, unto repentance. But we believe that and we stand on that. However, there are those naysayers on the other side, usually the opponents that we play in many cases, that will look for every little flaw and say, how do you call yourselves Christians? That, that kid did this or that kid did that. And so, well, you know what? What the reality is, is that God has drawn them. And so they looked in there. But when they looked in there at the things of God, they looked in there at the men who are trying to serve God. And when they saw an imperfection, they were gratified in their filthy soul because it gave them an excuse to continue living the way they're living. I don't know if that all made sense to you, but that was a word of God right there. So whoever made sense to, we will serve God. We will fail and make mistakes, but that's not our aim and that is not our plan. But when we do, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua the Christ, the Lamb of God who shed his blood. It's a competitive game. There's people that go out there, they get hit. There's people that go out there to get excited. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're a man and you wouldn't get a little bit excited when you have to fight back uh, some of the things that we ought not do, then I'd have to question what kind of man are you? And I just want to leave it right there. We need more men. Our nation is in the place it's in because we don't have many. And I'm going to plug this note. Hey, man, we got the election Tuesday. If you're not praying that this wicked leadership be exposed and removed, you're part of the problem. If you're not voting, you're part of the problem. And if your attitude is that, you know what, I'm going to vote for the lesser two evils, well, then you know what, then you have no reason to complain. And when you're enslaved and when your children's children are enslaved, shut up. It's your fault. We got to stand and we got to repent for our fathers and we got to repent for our own houses, but we got to take action. We got to stand and stand there for you're called to be a man. You're called to be a leader. You're called to go and you're called to stand for righteousness. And those of you say that politics and Christianity and faith have no place together. Well, you're an idiot because you've never read your Bible. It is God who established government. He established government to rule over the people, to take care of the people that, that would not be oppressed. His people, let me make that clear. And when you sit back and you watch and you do nothing and you don't use a voice and you don't use your social media for anything other than your self-gratification, but to stand and to challenge people and to speak the word of God, that someone may change their heart, that they may step up and vote. Yes, God's will be done, but God's will will be done to those who refuse to participate in his ways and to stand for truth and righteousness. I said, a coward will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what the word of God says. So stand. And if you want Isaiah 3, where women and children rule over you, just keep going the way you're going. 
well, this other one's not perfect. Neither are you. I'd love, I'd love to pull up your rap sheet. I'd love to pull up what's going through your mind and expose that to the world. It might be quite embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? I know it would be for me sometimes. So let's stop being hypocrites and let's stand for truth. Let's not judge a man based on his past, but judge a man based on his the character of at least loving a nation and the character of saying, you know what? I have no problem with you being a man or woman of God. That is the kind of man that I want in office because that's the choice I have. I will not be ruled over, according to Isaiah 3, which is a part of the curse by a woman who embraces murder, who embraces every queer kind of thing that you can imagine, the alphabet, sexual, immoral, one that's coming after your children to molest, to, to let men go in the bathroom. with. No, I won't. And if that ain't enough for you, then you're not a believer. It's just that simple. You're just not a believer. And then you come up with all the excuses you want to come up with, but you're just not a man of God if you don't believe that. If you can see that and vote for that or be absent in that, something wrong with you. So go ahead and get mad. There's your there's your punchline. We had a punchline last week. Coaches were retaliating, acting like fools, cursing, doing those things on the other side, and then and then when audacity to say that uh, we ought to teach God, we ought to teach character along with our God. How do you separate them? As Coach Ryle said, how do you separate that? God is character. God is integrity. God is truth. God is righteousness. And lo and behold, praise God, we're going to stand and stand there for and we're going to do it again. So let's get this lesson going today. I told you the title of my lesson. I wrote it down just before I started this morning. Leaders must know and leaders must sow. We do a little meeting we started this week for about 10 minutes with leaders. And let me tell you what that means. Those on the team who are actively participating in spreading the word of God, those who have demonstrated that they love the Lord Yeshua, that they're born again, and they have the spirit of God. And that's about 10 to 15 kids. That's good numbers, by the way. That's real good numbers. And so what we do is we talked about before we went out and we pray over those leaders individually, and then we come back with our team and we do the word before we go out on the field. Uh, sometimes it's nothing more than a reminder of what has been the stance of the week. And let me tell you what some of those words to the leaders were. I'm looking right here at my notes real quick. Um, and some of those words to the leader, I'm going to read to you in Exodus because this one jumped out to me last week. This is, this is the account of Moses, the, the leader of, of the millions of Israel and trying to judge in every case or whatever. And his father-in-law tells him, says, you ought to appoint men to help you with this matter. But this is the word of God. You do believe that, right? Exodus 18 and 21. Moreover, you shall select from all the people, able men. I said, you shall select able men. You may argue that all are able. And I would have to agree, but not all are willing. Select able men. You shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God. To fear of God, the fear of the Lord is to fear the word of God more than you're willing to embrace your sin. To stand on the word of God for Jesus Christ is the word that became flesh. To fear God. We're not talking about this Halloween. This, let me say it like it. Halloween that some of you celebrated last week. Mm. I'm not even going to preach on that today. Doesn't do any good. Most don't care. They're going to go do what they do. They could care less about, uh, about being unfearful of the spirit of the living God who says, entertain none of these things, especially these things that have demonic implications all over them. The roots are demonic, but, I, but I'm not going to go there. Such men only appoint men who are able men, men who fear God, men of truth. Men of truth are men who believe the word of God over their circumstance in every situation. Hating covetousness. They hate the, the, the desire of things that are not theirs, things that God has not given them. They hate this lust and this covetousness. They hate it. The, only such men and such, and, 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 and I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm kept stuttering here because I'm wanting to read some more, but I, I got to stop right there. You cannot put a man in leadership who's not an able man. Cannot put a man in leadership who's not a man who's fearful of God. You cannot put a man in, in leadership that does not hate uh what's wrong, that which is against God. In other words, a lover of truth. And you cannot put men in leadership that do not hate covetousness. This is the order of God in Exodus 18 and verse 21. Now you see why there's so few leaders. And now you see why the leaders that we have are corrupt. 
So this is what we shared with them, man. You've got to be able, man. You've got to people, people who stand. And though you may be tempted and there's no temptation except that which is common to man that may draw you, you got to stand on the word of God. And if you got to fight, you fight with the word of God. You deny the devil's tactics. Don't go into his language. Don't go into his tactics lest you be subject to his outcome. We stay with the word of God. This is what leaders are and this is what leaders do. And as you read on in the word of God, let me just read in my notes for sake of time. In the word of God, the next thing that we talked about is God, listen to this. I want you to listen closely. This is Joshua 5, 13 through 15. And this is my commentary on this. God does not join your team, but gives you a choice to join his team. You see, God's not, there's far too many of us that are making plans for ourselves and asking God to bless those plans. Why not become a part of the plan of God? And how do you do that? Because you love the truth and you love the word of God. Because you're fearful of God, you're so fearful that you dig in and you study the ways of God and you do that which God requires. And when you miss it, you repent, you get up and you do it again. And so we do not ask God to join our team. That that would not happen. He asked you to join his team. You see, it's not team, not team coach Shelby. It's team Yeshua. It's team Jesus Christ. It is the army of almighty God who is the commander in chief of my platoon. And I may have a job digging ditches in that platoon, but that's my job. And that's the job that he's called me to. And I will be evaluated by such. Quit trying to steal, be covetous and steal somebody else's position on the field and do the position God has given you. And even if that position is on the sidelines and you complaining about playing, why don't you start praying? Why don't you go ahead and stay in the P's of the alphabet? And if you can't plan, start praying and just see what my God will do for you on this team. Just see how he will arrange it and make you the best prayer warrior that there's ever been on this football team. And he goes on to say this, a choice to join his team. In Joshua 5, 13 through 15, it says this, the man Christ stood opposite of Joshua. I'm paraphrasing this. With sword drawn in hand, And Joshua went to him, which is Jesus Christ. And he said to him, are you for us or for our adversaries? And so he said, no. And so here he is. Joshua comes to him and says, he sees this man with a sword in his hand called the angel of the Lord, which is a pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. Study it out. It's true. And he's standing there with a sword in hand. And Joshua says, hey, are you for us? Are you against us? He said, nope. (laughs) No, sir. That ain't how it works, bro. What it is, are you with me? or against me. In other words, you better get over here behind me in my platoon, or this sword is meant for you instead of meant for Jericho, which is the next directive that he gave them to go in, to march. The walls came down and they plundered Jericho. But he had a choice before that to join his team or to stay on the team of the world. And he he chose team Jesus. And there's no other place in the Bible to where an angel allows worship except the angel of the Lord, which is proof of pre-incarnate Christ. Angels will not accept worship of man. They cannot, lest they be cast down and cast out. They're servants of the Most High God. And they're here to, to, uh, to serve God and to, to help you accomplish whatever God tells them to do, to surround you, to prosper the way that you go, that you shall not even dash your foot against a stone. Psalm 91. And he stood opposite and Joshua said, are you for us or against us? And he said, no, uh -uh, no, bud, you choose who you're for and against. They say, your will must die. I already died and rose from the dead for you. Now you're going to have to die and either join my team or build your own team. But if you do, I promise you there'll be consequences. Yeah, you may win a game or two on Friday night, but I got something to tell you. In the end, you're going to lose the big one. And it's going to be an eternal loss. Come on, somebody. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying on this. Are you for us or or for our adversaries? He said, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Jesus is standing there, brothers, right now as the commander of the heavenly army. And he's saying, join me or oppose me. There is no in-between. Your limp-wristed fairy tale the same way some of you treat the voting and say, I'm not going to vote, this and that. This is the same way you treat your faith. Well, I, I'm, I, well, I believe in Jesus. I, we, got a, we got something worked out. We got you know, No, you got something worked out, all right. You got, you got him worked out of your life. 
Because when he comes into your life, he comes in to do a work in your life. He comes in to kick some things down and remove some things, some things that have been sacred to you too long, some things that need to be burnt in the name of Yeshua the Christ. Is it not in Joshua 1 that my God, when I join his team, he says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous for the Lord thy God is with you? Does he not say that four times? Praise God, I just lost a light, but I don't care. I just preached the light out. A little dark, you can still hear me. I don't care if you see me or not. I don't know what just happened. Something just shut off over there. Praise God. And I want to also remind you that Joshua laid hand. I mean, I'm sorry, Moses laid hands upon Joshua, that the same spirit that was in on him would come upon the next leader of Israel. The one that would take him to conquer the promised land. Was his hands was laid on by the one who was called to deliver him from Egypt. You see, their callings were a little different, but they were quite the same. They were a little different in their personality. One was a warrior, a soldier. One was a type of Christ of delivering. Yet so was the other. So study that contrast right there. And now we come together and we pray for our leaders before the ball game. So, Father, I pray that, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that there be men watching this. I pray that there be men that touch, that the Spirit of God move upon them. I pray that there be men that will stand in this hour, will not be cowards. I pray that there be men in this hour that will repent of their sin, that they'll be washed in the blood of the Lamb, that their heart will be ripped out of their chest and replaced with the heart and desire of God, that the Spirit of God will come upon them and lead them into all righteousness and truth, that they'll stop their agenda, stop their ways, and they will follow the way of Yahweh, Yeshua the Christ. Christ, the Lamb of the living God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And no matter what adversity comes, it's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. It is coming that we will stand upon the Word of God, that we will be men of truth, able men, men who love the Word of God, men who fear God, and men who hate covetousness, and we will lead in such ways. And you may throw a punch, you may throw a foul word, you may do this, but I'm throwing the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, that is sharper than any two-edged sword, that cuts deep and will plant deep into the soul of that man who's on the opposition and that man will be in torment till he repent and put his trust in the name of Jesus Christ the Lamb of God, that he's blind and then he, come, then he can see. He was deaf and now he will hear, that he will be resurrected from the dead, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. This is what we do. Now go around and if you a man of God, lay hands on those leaders on your team. If you don't have time, tell them to all group up, put their hand on one another, and you put your hands on there, and you pray. Why? Because God says to. You're a raiser up of leaders. I know that wasn't good English, but I got the same degree you got. You're a raiser. You raise the dead in the name of Yeshua the Christ, and you stand. And this is what we will do, and this is how we'll proclaim. And then we go to our team in Matthew 25. And I'm not going to go, I'm going to have to paraphrase for the sake of time. Because these people just don't have an appetite for the word of God. Oh, they can suck down 45 slices of pizza. Oh, they can lick the ice cream store till they run dry and have to shut the doors. Oh, they can drink soda waters till the, till the, the machine runs out. They can do that, but they can't handle much of the word of God. In which the only thing that God tells you to, you can be a glutton with, and that's the word of God. Matter of fact, you commanded to feed on it continually. Meditate this word, word of the Lord. Let it not depart from you, and then you will make your way prosperous, Joshua 1.8. Have I not commanded you four times in one chapter? I think he's trying to get his attention. Be strong and courageous for the Lord thy God is with you. Stand up in this hour. We have a Tuesday is going to change this nation forever. And yet God has already ruled, but I choose to side with God and do that which he's called me to do. And you say, if God's already ruled, then why do I need to go do something? Here's why. The same reason in Ephesians 6, he tells you to put on the armor of God. Why would you need to put on the armor of God if the battle is the Lord's? To prove that you believe that and to stand and to be a part of what God is doing. Can you think of a greater blessing than being a part of what God is doing? Do it. Quit focusing on your losses and focus on your win. Team Jesus, team Yeshua, team the Christ. And so when we go into the, the talents of Matthew 25, there was one servant that was given five. There was one that was given two talents and one that was given one. The five and the two invested and doubled those talents. The one dug a hole in the ground and hid it to protect it. 
See, far too many people are trying to protect your faith as if you could protect God. Because your faith, if it ain't God, it ain't faith at all. And a secret faith that's hidden in the closet is no faith at all. You see, a city on a hill that's hidden is, is, is not possible. A lamp does not be, is not lit to be covered up. It's lit to produce light. And you are here to produce, and you may be one of those ones that only has one talent. But let me tell you, I'm going to liken the talent to this leadership lesson that we were talking about. That one talent, even if that talent, let's say it's the word of God, which is the what we do when we go on the field, we speak the word of God. Jesus, that's one. Oh, hallelujah. If you only got one, you got that one. And at that name, that mountains move. At that name, trees are ripped up and planted into the sea. At that name, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If you got one talent, sow it, let it become two. Let two become four. Let four become eight. Let eight become 16. Sometimes I think those that have fewer talents are more blessed than those that have the five. Although the five invested and had 10 and the two had four when the master showed up, the one could have been invested and outperformed the five. Why? Because that one name that you all know, that name of Jesus Christ, if you'd stop being ashamed of speaking that name, you would find out there would be an explosion in your program. An explosion. There would be a stirring of faith. There'd be a building up of the man. There'd be a resurrection of the dead. There'd be healings of bodies. My goodness. Which one are you? Bring your talents. Speak the word of God. My God, my God, my God. The master returns to the faithful. He gives more to the five and the two. He doubles their talents and he takes from the one and throws him into the bowels of hell. All of you have a voice. All of you have a mouth. All of you have a way. I'm not saying you're perfect, but you are following the perfect one if you choose to do so. Let me read some more commentary to you, and I will shut this lesson down. To the one who refused to invest, he should have invested. He should have invested. And because of his disobedience, his refusal, then he was removed from the kingdom and cast into the bowels of hell. I want you to hear that. That's an eternal place, eternal separation from God because of your refusal to speak the word of God, because your continuance to look upon other believers and try to find flaws as an excuse for you not to serve God. What you have will be removed from you. The evidence is that you know the name of Jesus or you wouldn't be looking into the believer's life. We just saw that this past week. We know that. You know the name of Jesus, but you refuse to bow at that name. Were well, you going to bow one way or another if you've seen any of the old ancient stories? or the? And I don't think it will be this way, but every time I think about bow, you can bow on purpose or the king can force you to bow. It may be the loss of your legs because you really don't have nothing to stand on anyway. That's why we bow and surrender to God. It's really, really, you don't have that kind of strength. You don't have an arm that's strong enough to bring glory to God. Therefore, we bow. And it is God when we bow as dead before God that the Spirit of God comes upon the repentant one putting their trust in Yeshua who's not ashamed of the Word of God, who's a man of truth, who's a man of honor, who's a man who fears God, a man who hates covetous. He raises from the dead and does mighty things. Was it not Moses that said, Lord, I can't speak. I can't go. I can't do this. God didn't play games with him. If he had continued to refuse God, that story could have been completely different. But he went, and God even gave him a companion and his brother. He did. And they went, and he said, I'll send us. And let me, all you coaches got somebody. And if you don't, you need to find them. First of all, find Jesus, and they'll find you. You find Jesus, and they'll find you. It may just be one. But I promise you this. Let me promise you this. And I may not be the one you want, but if you're listening to this, this coach's group, I'll stand with you. So shut up. You got one. I may not be much. I may not be anybody, but you and I together, the Bible says, can put 10,000 demons to flight. And with the spirit of God, Ooh, hallelujah. A three strand cord is not easily broken with the spirit of God. They will all bow 10,000 times 10,000 will bow. So what is your excuse? You got to come in agreement with the word of God, spirit, soul, and body. Come into agreement with the word of God. You and Jesus make the majority. 
And the word goes on to say this, that you will be removed, speaking to the one in verse 29, to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance, so sow the seed. But he that does not have, even what he has will be taken. And in verse 30, cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We go to sow the, to sow the word of God. I don't care if you're, if you consider yourself to know some, if you know the name of Jesus, if you can't say nothing else, just say Jesus. I said, if you don't know anything else, just say Jesus. If you're one that has one talent, just say Jesus. And I promise you next week, you'll have two. And I promise you the next week, you'll have four. And I promise you the next week, you'll have eight. You should, you can't, the seed cannot germinate and grow if it's not sown. The name of Jesus will stick in the soul of the man who hears that word of God. And you may not see that harvest for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Now we're back to aisle five at Walmart. When I see these kids, these that'll be grown men, some of these knuckleheads that ain't doing it, but they're listening and they're being obedient to us. That they're going to come along. They're going to have 15 kids then riding in four baskets. Them and their wives going on and say, Coach, I want you to know something. That word of God is stuck in my heart for the last 15 years. I surrendered, repent, put my trust in Jesus, and now I'm raising these 15 boys and girls up in the ways of God. That's how it works. It is the Holy Spirit. One man plants, one man waters, but it is my God who brings the increase in his time. But let me assure you of this. His word, Isaiah 50 or 55, will not return to to avoid. It will accomplish what he's called it to accomplish. So you better get to participating. Get this attitude, the same same attitude you guys have toward the election about not voting is the same. That's because you got that same attitude spiritually and you don't go profess. You don't speak. So it's that's called a man of excuses. That is a leader, but it's not the kind of leader in God's army. It is a leader for the kingdom of darkness is what it is. So shake off these heavy bands, shake off the serpent as, as Paul did in the fire, remove that garbage and let's dance and move forward. Most people run and squeal like a girl because they saw the serpent. But when we see the serpent, my Bible says that we're to stomp on scorpions and serpents. The, the demonic activity must come to an end. Here's how we stomp in the name of Jesus, by the power of the spirit of almighty God, get devil in Jesus name. Now I watered that way down, but what I didn't water down. Just say Jesus. God bless you guys. I pray that you share this word. I pray that it'll be a blessing to you. We'll be back next week, God willing. You guys that still have one more game or you guys that are in the playoffs or whatever, it's time to have a team meeting. And in that team meeting, it's time to, to welcome Jesus into that meeting and speak the word, lay hands on your kids, Speak the promises of God, because if you got that right, no matter what our earthly scoreboard says, we win in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Praise God.